Hello, this is a short tutorial on structure diagrams. Um, so structure diagrams are a tool which you can use to help make you um, a plan when you create a program. Um, they're essentially an abstraction. Abstraction is the process of removing details from a problem um, so that it becomes simpler to solve. And they don't represent all the details of the game, but they give you a kind of a high-level overview of what's required to be built. Um, and they're a part of uh, problem decomposition, which is a process that we use in computer science to break problems down into smaller pieces. So if we look at the example on the screen, you'll see that this is a plan for an adventure game that you might make, um, which has got three sort of mini quests within the game. There's entering the palace, getting to the tower, and then the classic rescuing the princess. And each one of these has got two or three sub-steps within it. To enter the palace you need to first collect three gold coins, get a key, and then enter the palace. Each one of those might in turn have smaller um, tasks within each of them. Um, and so the use of a structure diagram is principally to break down a problem into smaller pieces and we call that problem decomposition. And the reason for doing this is that it defines scope so we know how much work we need to do before um, we start coding the problem and also it identifies the subroutines within the program. A subroutine is a smaller part of a program so the subroutines within this adventure game might be entering the palace, getting to the tower and rescuing the princess. You'll note that before we can complete the task at a higher level in the diagram, we must first complete all the tasks below it. So the first task within this adventure game would be to collect three coins, then get a key, then enter the palace. And then once we've done that, we can say that we've completed the task of entering the palace. The second section would be sneaking past the guards, opening the door and entering the tower. And at that point we've got to the tower. And then the final part would be climbing the stairs, picking up the princess, and then we've rescued the princess, and then the adventure game is complete. So, given that was the order for the previous structure diagram, I've produced another simpler structure diagram here, um, and I'd like you to tell me the order that these tasks would go in. So if you want to pause the video, have a little think about it, I'll get back to you in a tick. So the tasks, the order that these tasks would have been completed in um, is starting at the lowest level. You move from left to right, and once you've finished within a subtask, you move down to the lowest level of the next subtask. And so in this instance, E would be completed first, then F. And once E and F have been completed, we can go and say that B has been completed. The next step would be to do G, and then we'll do H, and then we do I. And then once we've done G, H and I, we do C. And once B and C are completed, we'll move on to D. And once we've done B, C and D, we could say that A has been completed. So, to summate, um, this um, tutorial has been about how to produce a structure chart. And a structure chart gives you a high-level overview of a program that you're about to make. Um, it is, in a sense, an abstraction and the process of, of, of abstraction is when you remove unnecessary detail from a problem. Um, it also helps problem decomposition. And problem decomposition is where we break a problem down into smaller parts. It helps us identify the subroutines of a program or the programs within the program. And finally, it helps you ascertain the scope, which is the size of a problem and the amount of time it might take you to complete the problem.